Hi guys, Nigel Farage has a habit of having his behind handed to him by very smart women. It must really rub his supporters the wrong way, and this time it was the turn of Francis Coppola, a financial expert. But this whole saga is frustrating. It's an absolute failure on the side of the media who are constantly giving this charlatan airtime. We've seen it with the so-called channel crossing crisis. Farage turns up on the beach with his Aldi binoculars and within a few weeks everyone from the BBC to Sky News is covering it as a story. The fact that a few months ago Farage put out a video on social media about his dodgy affairs, which has culminated in two MPs wasting parliamentary time over it and the BBC dedicating time on Newsnight is beyond absurd. However, perhaps the only silver lining here is that Farage had his behind handed to him once again. Enjoy. This was a personal hit job. The report makes it clear that the reason they closed his account was that Nigel paid off his mortgage and the house was released as a security and that brought him below the criteria for an account at that bank, which we should remember is a specialist provider of private banking services to very rich people. So, so it's clear from the report that they made the decision some time ago not to continue the relationship when the mortgage came to an end. But, it was just, and, but they wanted further just... What they said was in that report, and read pages three and ten I did. of that report, and it's available on the Mail Online to any viewer of this programme that wishes to see it. They say he is, and they say it three times, a financially viable account. But we don't like what he stands for. He conflicts with the values of this organization. He conflicts, and goodness knows what it means, with our diversity agenda. And when the mortgage ends, we won't renew it and get rid of him. That if was I may. Not, that was, hang on. If that I was may. not a commercial decision. If they I said, Francis, three Francis, times Francis. they said it was a commercially viable account. Francis Coppola. Okay, on page 10, it says that when the mortgage comes to an end, what's called the EC, which is the commercial viability of the account, will fall. And they made the decision to terminate the relationship but, on that so, basis. So, so your account was commercially viable while you had that mortgage, but once it was paid off, it was no longer commercially viable. Well, that is hang what on, the report hang on, says. Hang on a second. I had a large current account surplus sitting with that bank through that period of time. They were using the ending of the mortgage. And it was that, that I mean, what was made clear to me in a phone call from the head of private yeah. clients was because I no longer owed them money, that was their convenience. So, exit. Francis Cobb, if I could, uh, no, no, let me just add, let Francis, should banks, should banks be judging individuals okay. by holding legal views? Well, let, 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 let's, let's just, let's just, I want to rephrase that, because I want to ask you, should banks be refusing customers on the basis of their political views? I think it depends on the kind of bank, to be frank, and we should remember that this is well, not well, an I, ordinary... What, what about all of them? No, no, wait a minute. What, they're all no, woke. What kind? They're, all, they're all Remainer. They're all global. No, but what so kind? Banks, which are commercial enterprises, who they do business with is their decision in a free market. So, so is Rishi Sunak right to have a, a inquiry into this? He's going to ask the FCA to look at it. I confidently predict that the FCA will look at this and say, nothing to look at here. This thank you, thank you both very much. Is it reasonable that law-abiding citizens could be debanked to become non-people in our country. Clearly, in your view, it is. Thank I you. think it depends on the kind of bank. This Thank you both very much. Thank you. That says everything I need. We're going to have to stop it there. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> well done to Francis here. Look, I don't know the ins, ins and outs of these banking systems and uh, their rules and regulations, but, you know, this is a private entity ac acting within a free market and Nigel Farage has a problem with that. You know, Mark, he, he claims to be a free marketeer, a capitalist, and now he wants the government, because it was brought up in the House of Commons, and he asked, or well, at least, I don't know if he asked, but the Prime Minister himself commented on this, um, wants the government to intervene in a private matter. Anyway. Um, notice that towards the end, he resorted to his old uh, ranting about Ramoners, Remainers, woke, uh, globalists, whatever. Uh, my bigger problem here is about the amount of airtime that the BBC, Sky News and others have dedicated to this charlatan. Why are they doing this? Why is it a case of Nigel Farage brings up a story 
and the mainstream media run with it. Why are we talking about this? Why are we dedicating time? My, my response to this is, the, is not so much a criticism of what's, what's happening between the bank and um, this private individual. That's their business. My problem with, is with the media running with this. Why are they dedicating so much time? There are more important issues to be talking about. When it's taught, when you're when we're talking about banking, there are so many people who are likely to lose their homes. There are people who in who are in rent uh, buy to rent properties who are likely to be forced out because landlords are going to put up the rent. Why aren't we talking about that? What about the cost of living crisis? Inflation has dropped, but it means prices are still going up, so people are struggling. Wouldn't it be better to talk about those issues, issues that actually impact ordinary people, instead of wasting time on this charlatan? Really, he's not, a, he's not an MP. He's not a politician. Why is there so much time wasted on Nigel Farage? I don't get it. Hopefully this will be the end of the saga. This will be the end of the story. Farage has had his arse handed to him. This should go away now. But I fear it's going to be ramped up once again. And th the fact that the Home Secretary, Suella Braveman, and the Prime Minister are talking about this is just insane. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.